Hi, this is Tom Harper with Avidyne, and today I want to take you through our Vantage 12 upgrade for the Cirrus, and specifically our recently announced easy installation kit that dealers will use to convert the existing Integra connections to Vantage 12. As you may know, there are over 4,000 Integra and pre-Integra Cirrus aircraft that are eligible for this Vantage 12 upgrade. It's going to give these owners large 12-inch glass with touchscreen capability, 3D synthetic vision, and most importantly, dual attitude reference systems for full redundancy. The Integra system only had one AHARS. Loss of PFD meant loss of autopilot. So Vantage 12 overcomes that problem and allows you to fly through a PFD failure without even disconnecting the autopilot. We recommend the standard configuration, which of course is a dual PFD MFD displays with the integrated dual attitude reference sensors built into each display. We're recommending a single air data computer that feeds both displays and a single magnetometer, which is already out in the wing feeding the Integra system. So we'll just leave that there and there's no new wires that you need to run. And it'll feed both ARSs. We recommend an IFD 540 and an IFD 440, along with the DSC 90, of course. Our AMX 240 audio panel is desired, but not required. And of course, if you have a 540, you're going to need a remote mounted transponder, and that can be the AXP 322, which is our remote mount transponder you see here, coupled with our Skytrax 200 for ADSB in. So you'll have ADSB out and ADSB in or uh, like an NGT9000R, which has ADS-B in and out, and it has a diversity option as well. And these new Easy Adapters and Easy Adapter Harness that we've developed as part of the Easy Installation Kit. First of all, what gets removed from your Cirrus? Well, first thing we're going to do, obviously, is remove the two displays, your PFD and your MFD. Those must be returned for core value as part of the pricing that's been announced. If you still have GNS 430s, those of course come out. Many of you have already upgraded to IFDs. Uh, if you've upgraded to GTNs, those will need to come out and you will need to install dual IFDs. Uh, of course, your GTNs you can uh, get some resale value for. We are certifying uh, with IFDs our high-speed byte flight data bus is required to communicate with the Vantage. Good things that we come out of this as well is the ability to remove the blind turn coordinator that typically sits in the bolster over here behind the molding. Most of you don't even know it's there except if it fails on you, but it's part of the Vantage STC. You now you've got dual ARSs. Uh, you don't need that comparator anymore, so that will be able to be pulled. So that's uh, the good news. <clears throat> if you have a KGP 560, some of the serial numbers have this remote mounted enhanced ground prox system that comes out as well you can resell it or trade it to your dealer uh, since all of the ifds come with full terrain alerting and flta which means forward looking terrain alerting you've got full cfit protection with the existing uh, avidine systems and you don't need the ground prox and vantage won't display it anyway so that comes up. You can remove the panel mounted transponder in the tray. Obviously, you're going to switch it over and wire for a remote mount transponder. Uh, if you have dual 440s, IFD 440s, you can keep the panel mounted transponder. Some of you have already got like a NGT 9000 panel mount. You can keep that or a, a GTX 345 or something. It'll Vantage will work with that. The IFDs currently work with it. Again, we recommend our audio panel, the AMX240. If you have an existing Garmin or a PS Engineering or some other audio panel, uh, you can leave it in. The reason we recommend the AMX240 is uh, we, it does accommodate the, the monitor 1-2 buttons. The IFDs will tune the standby comm, and this gives you the ability to switch those on and off. What stays? Oh, well, all the Integra wiring stays. We know exactly how all these airplanes are wired. Uh, and so we want to pick up all that wiring and, and transfer it right into to the Vantage through the EC install kit. The existing magnetometer stays, as I mentioned. The current autopilot servos stay. Again, some of you have already 
installed IFDs and DFC90, and you know this. If you have an SIU airplane and mechanical instruments like you see here, all of that stays. We'll continue to talk to it with Vantage. If on the later models that have a glove box on the right, and you have primary engines, in other words, you have a DAU, which is your engine sensor, uh, we'll be able to accommodate that, and it'll stay the same. We're not changing that. If you have an XMD-076 for satellite weather, you can continue to display that on Vantage and your IFDs. Many of you have switched out the XMD and put in ADS-B for weather and traffic, and we'll accommodate that as well. Some of you have Skywatch, some of you have the Avidine TAS 600, and again, those can stay put. Many of the old Skywatch customers are pulling out the Skywatch and putting in the remote NGT 9000R with the TAS enablement. It uses the existing Skywatch antenna and it dramatically reduces your weight and uh, gives you a modern system that which fully under warranty, etc. So not required for what we're doing, but we like to share that. So while well, you've got the airplane apart, it might make sense for you. We're not touching anything with the standby instruments. We've had several questions about this. Our STC is independent of the standbys. So whatever you have is fine. It's much cheaper if you don't touch them. Obviously, you could put in uh, the Mid-Continent or the uh, GI-275 or anything else you may have already done. Those are all fine, but it's independent of Vantage and the STC we're working on. So what gets installed? Obviously the PFD and MFD, which have attitude reference sensors built in. There's an air data computer on the back of the PFD. The Vantage Easy Harness and Easy Adapters, I'll talk more about that. There's some high-speed bike flight wiring that is in the adapter harness that needs to be added down to the IFD, so it needs to be added into those two trays. Uh, we got to pick up power for air data computer number one and two if you have it. There is an option for a second air data computer and a second magnetometer. I'll talk more about that. If you're putting in the 540 per our recommended configuration, all the wiring is still there. You just need to go to the bigger tray and the bigger back plane so the connectors will just get transferred. The dealer will handle all this for you. And then your 440 goes right where the 430 already was. Again, there is some extra wires that need to get plugged in there. Um, you're going to relocate the transponder if you're going with a 540 like you see here. If you're doing dual 440s, you don't need to do that. Uh, and the Skytrax 200 as needed. DFC 90, it swaps. We recommend you swap the s -Tech tray. Technically, it's kind of plug and play for the s -Tech. There's a wire that needs to be added. Um, since many of you have already done the DSC-90, that's already in place. So that makes it pretty clean. Here's what it looks like on the back of the Vantage 12 display. So we've designed those with modern connectors, but for the spe specifically for the Cirrus, we've made these easy PFD and MFD adapters. And you can see they're, they've just got connectors on both sides, so one side mates to the back of each display, these connectors will accommodate all the existing Integra connectors plus the additional connectors that may be needed. And I'll take you through that. You'll see it here. Here's an actual photo of the of the adapters. There's a PFD adapter and it has the relay socket on it for the relay switching of the autopilot. And then the MFD doesn't have all the same connectors populated because the MFD only has a single connector for Integra. And here's a picture of the harness that, that also mates. In the airplane, you can see on the back side, you've got the back of the panel. You've got your PFD and your MFD mounted. There's an easy adapter on the back of each one. The existing... PFD connectors, there's three of them that get mounted and uh, just plug right into the back of the EZ adapter. That way you don't have to cut off connectors and rewire a bunch of pins. The dealers uh, can convert them all. And then the MFD only has one connector. It gets plugged into that EZ adapter along with the uh, EZ adapter harness, which 
Here's that relay that was mounted over here for the old autopilot configuration. We'll tr just repurpose the same relay and plug it in uh, into the Adesi adapter. Again, this just cleans up all the wiring and makes it more uniform. Here's the Easy Adapter harness laid in. You can see it plugs into both Easy Adapters, into both PFD and the MFD. There's some wires that go down and pick up the high speed byte flight in the uh, IFDs. We've got a single air data computer mounted on the back of the PFD. Uh, there's no ADC on the MFD, so we'll just bag and stow that connector. In the event you have the second ADC, of course, you'll plug that in. I'll talk about that in a minute. The high-speed bike flight wires go down to each of the IFDs. And they get wired accordingly. This is all part of the installation kit and the install manual the dealers will manage. But there's uh, wires hanging out that are already terminated with pins. Uh, we're going to pick up and repurpose the old turn coordinator 1 and 2 circuit breakers. So we'll just pick up where that connector is behind the panel and then the dealer will relabel those uh, turn, turn coordinator circuit breakers for uh, ADC1 and optional ADC2 if you have it. If you're getting the ADC2 MAG2 option, which some of you will choose to do, that gives you a second air data computer mounted on the back of the MFD along with the primary one, and it adds a second magnetometer out in the wing. Remember, there's already one out there for Integra. We'll have to pull down that single mag bracket and put in a dual mag bracket like you see here and then add the second magnetometer in as it were if you're putting the second adc in you will mount that on they'll have them mounted that on the back of the uh, mfd and they'll go ahead and plug in that adc2 connector on the off the easy adapter harness this adc2 kit comes with an additional pigtail harness that plugs into the mfd adapter and then runs out to the wing for the second magnetometer. There's a little dip switches on each of the uh, easy adapters that needs to be switched from the up position to the down position so that it knows to independently look at each magnetometer. Again, it saves a ton of custom wiring and cutting and, and repinning by doing it this way. The nice thing is uh, all of the Cirruses are configured the same way, then it's going to make troubleshooting down the road much easier for uh, any dealer that happens to need to work on it in the future. So here's kind of a summary slide. Your existing Integra plugs plug into the Easy Adapters. There's the Easy Adapters in green. The blue is your Easy Adapter Harness. And then the dark blue here is the if you have the air data and the second mag, second ADC, second mag. Of course, the second mag uh, harness has to run out to the wing and, and get mounted with the dual bracket. So that's some extra labor that will happen if you choose to do the second ADC and the second mag. And the dealer will take care of that in their quoting. One of the things, uh, the IFDs are certified to have both WAS antennas on the skin of the airplane. Many of these Cirruses were delivered with the antennas under the glare shield, one or more of the antennas under the glare shield. Regardless of how they are configured today, they have to move to the outside the airplane. So that, depending on your configuration, that may add some additional installation labor for uh, getting those moved. This picture shows the difference between an Integra display at 10.4 inch versus the big 12 inch uh, Vantage displays. So in, I put it in the MFD position here, but you, get, you can get an idea of how much more screen area and how much thinner the bezel is. Uh, it doesn't require us to replace the glare shield, fortunately, but you will have to replace the panel. So it's a significant improvement in screen size. So we've got several different six different panel options based on serial number whether you've got air conditioning whether you're a 20 or 22 whether you've got air conditioning or not whether you've got primary engines or not so uh, we need to provide your serial number when play the dealer will do that when placing the order and one of the things that's critical we recommend you use our panels obviously some dealers are going to want to make their own panel and that's fine they 
they, if they're doing it, that's because they've got experience doing it. And maybe you want to powder coat your panel rather than use our overlay, uh, which is fine as well. One of the things that's critical is the 11 degree bend right here in the panel. Because you got to remember, I don't have a top down view, but if you had a top view of this, the PFD is parallel to the firewall. And so the attitude reference sensor built in that display nose forward is nice perpendicular to the to the back of the display. Because of the MFD is sitting at an 11 degree angle, therefore the attitude reference sensor is at an angle. It's already pre-calibrated based on this panel bend so that it knows which direction is forward. If you bend up your own panel and it, it's not quite accurate, then it's going to require a recalibration. So it's, it's easiest just to use the existing panel, even if you want to powder coat it or uh, put on your own overlays. Here's the uh, retail pricing on Vantage 12 as of 2024. Uh, so the Vantage 12 standard kit is 33000 and that includes a PFD with an attitude reference sensor built in, an MFD with an attitude reference sensor built in, so you get dual ARS, a single air data computer on the back of the PFD. It'll include your install kit and your uh, documentation and all that. So that's the standard kit. And notice the asterisk, that means that uh, that includes an Integra return core. So your PFD and MFD will come back to Avidyne as part of that pricing. Everything else is optional. The uh, easy install kit, which is the adapter harness and the two adapters, not included. Those are $2,100. The other option is the AD, excuse me, ADC2 Mag2. That's a $9,500 option. Some of you will choose to get that. And then here's your panel and hardware kits, $250. And you just pick which panel based on serial number. And same with your overlay if you choose to use ours. And there's with the SR20, the 22, with SIU, with DAU. And uh, there's also ones for different environmental controls if you have air conditioning. So that kind of wraps it up. That's the uh, easy install kit and uh, the current configuration. Uh, we are moving closer to certification on the Cirrus. We've got tons of flight hours on it and with our test aircraft. We had the FAA in last week for two full days. So uh, a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. It always takes longer than we hope. But we're getting there, and we expect to have initial deliveries later this year. So stay tuned, and fly safe out there, everybody, and look forward to talking to you. Thanks so much.